Hello, welcome to the Simply Living podcast, first episode. I'm here with my husband, Joshua, yeah. and um, yeah, I'm Cody. We're just here <laughs> starting yeah. this podcast. Um, we really wanted to share and start this podcast because we're trying to learn how to live in peace, trying to learn how to live simply. Um, and to me, and what God has been like, kind of speaking to me about simply living, it's really just living in peace in surrender and in love so you know in peace with god's supernatural peace and surrender to him and in his glory and seeking him and in love with him and living for him and in us in love with people and loving people so just basically like living is just 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 live just it's just simply live for god for people it's simple really yeah i think that Hey guys, I'm Joshua. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I think that, I don't know, we've been seeing how we can get so caught up in the busyness and stress and anxiety of life. And, you know, when we've been coming together, we're just like, man, why is life so extra all the time? And like, Mm -hmm. at least that's how I've been feeling. There's just a lot going on all the time, always. And so, well, for me, I've been pretty disconnected from, like, social media and, like, news and everything. But lately, I've been hearing a lot through our small group and, you know, other people talking about a lot of things. And I was like, whoa, there's a lot going on, like, in in their heads. Mm. I could see it as they're speaking. And I'm like, I guess I was just thankful for not, like, being too connected to all of it but I guess I'm still trying to find that balance too of being disconnected but also informed yeah informed Um, that's true but yeah I guess that's my side y'all I'm just here to kind of help with the conversation all right oh my goodness I'm just here to kind of give some two cents but you know Cody's gonna be driving this podcast forward oh my goodness thanks it's because I told him it's helpful for me to talk and have conversation when talking with people talking with somebody so thank you joshua for being here (laughs) yeah thank you for having me yes um (laughs) it sounds like an interview (laughs) like literally like you're married we're married it's it's (laughs) we're just talking but um uh yeah like honestly i think for me like i've been struggling with yeah getting too caught up with like the worries of life and like I don't know, trying to do too much, like trying to do all this and like having to be perfect and like trying to do, I don't know, so much like podcasts, YouTube, work, um, music, like all the gifts, like use it all at once and writing and reading, but also just want to chill and rest and just like be there. Like, you know what I mean? Like trying to like grow in patience and grow in humility and growing, not judging people and growing this and that. And it's like, I feel like I've been putting a lot on I don't know, the cares of the world, I guess, like seeing, I don't watch the news either, um, and I barely am on social media, I recently got back on just to post and stuff, but um, I've been listening to a lot of like, you know, celebrities do this, and like, as I watch YouTube, celebrities do this, or like, this crazy thing is going on in the church, or with Gen Z, or like, da 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 da, and I'm like, oh my goodness, Jesus, help us, Mm -hmm. but I think God's been teaching both of us just to seek God, Um, just seek God, that's what the Bible says, seek the kingdom of righteousness and all else will be added to you so like that's really the focus like if we just seek god and focus on him and surrendering to him and like living life for him and that's all that matters like what we want like everything about us dies like our flesh dies right and we're just living for him but we become nothing and he becomes everything we're not worried about what people think because we're just living for him we're not fearing about the next steps because we're just walking in obedience then it's just simply living like we're just we're just just living at that point we're just walking in peace because we're not caring we're not we're we're not living in fear and concerns we're i don't know how to describe it but like you're just seeking Mm -hmm. the lord and that's all that that's all that you're focused on because he will lead you in what you should do um yeah yeah i'm sorry i was like i know i wanted to keep going but i was like oh he might have something to say let me (laughs) stop (laughs) No, no, go ahead. Okay, yes. I was just thinking about, because I think I recently talked to Joshua about this, about how Jesus lived. I was like, how Jesus moved and walked and lived was he he just focused on his, like, the reason why he was here, on loving people, on loving God. He wasn't trying to argue with people. Like, 
he wasn't trying to seek out arguments. He wasn't trying to, um, I don't know, overload himself. He wasn't looking at all the news and what's going on and freaking out and worrying about it. He wasn't, um, I don't know, he wasn't trying to succeed in life like the world says, like trying to build all this wealth and like build all this education and all that type of stuff to build the wealth. But he was just living for God. <laughs> he was just like, I don't know, think about Jesus' life. Like he was just living for God. So, I mean, you bring up a good point. And I think this is something that we all as Christians probably ask multiple times is we look at Jesus, right? Why was he able to do what, what you're describing, like live the life he lived? He was so secure, one, in his, his identity of the Father and in his purpose. Like he's constantly going back to why he's on the earth and who sent him. So all of us have a unique purpose and we all have a unique identity. And to me, at least, I don't know how y'all are, but that's a question I've been asking daily, like trying to secure like my identity be, you know, to have that secure identity in Christ, like how he made me, who he made me to be and what my purpose is to be on earth. Now there's the general will of God, like, okay. So a lot of what I heard you say is when we simply living comes as a result of being within the will of God, because when you're outside of that, things get even more chaotic than they need to be. Mm. But when you're inside the will of God, which there's very blatant, specific wills of God, you know, for us to preach the gospel, you know, to cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the lepers. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. You know, um, remain, maintain sexual purity. Uh, these are all scriptures. Um, and then we have specific wills of God in our life, like a specific purpose. And I think when we can hone into what God placed us on this earth for, when we're in that purpose, and that's where we can really simply live, even with all the other stuff going around around us, it's like you just live, like kind of like you were saying. Yeah, no, it's true. I think like you're just living, and that's, yeah, that's the key. It's like you're living for God. And you, at that point, you can just live, but just keep walking in that way instead of like, listening to all these other voices or living for other people and what you think they want and what you think they're, you know, what they would love you for or whatever. But even as you were talking about, like, the, the God's will and the purpose, like, um, because I think that's true. Like, we were, we were talking about this yesterday as well. Like, that's when we can be most fulfilled when we're literally just obeying God and what his will is for us and, like, following him. That's when we're most fulfilled. When we're trying to be outside of that, then we're like, man, but why isn't this, like, why am I still sad or why am I still struggling or like where's this dissonance or whatever it is mm -hmm. um but i also feel like or it's not really a but but i'm thinking about like people or like myself when you don't fully know the specific will god has for you like the purpose or like you're not fully sure what he's saying i think for me like god's been teaching me like if you're just seeking him that's where it can be added like that's when you're seeking god and you're literally seeking as in trying to get to know him praying to him opening up to him confessing to him reading his word to know about him um when you're focused on him solely he works in you to work out the purposes he has for you he he tells you things to know how to obey he works in you to want to obey he reminds you he like reminds you who you are and your identity so you can walk confidently in that he gives you supernatural peace because you cast all your worries on him and i think that's where like a big focus is like you you're able to walk in his specific will for your life and to obey him and walk in peace when you're focused and seeking him and that's like your main mission in life like seek the lord and he can work in you to love people well and like go preach the gospel and however you're supposed to live your life hmm. no that's a really good point because i think that a lot of times we want to we skip that step under <laughs> yeah. the, the general will of god Mm. And we're looking for our specific purpose. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What am I? Am I supposed to be a doctor? Am I supposed to be a full time evangelist? Am I supposed to? Uh, how many kids am I supposed to have? Am I supposed to live here or here or like very sp specifics? But we we don't we just by step the general like yeah. seeking God and like. So I guess that's an encouragement that if you're trying to figure out your specific will of God, maybe start with the general like. You know, yeah, yeah, just seek, seek, just seek him. Yeah. That's a good place to start. Yeah. And then it'll narrow down 
into what you you are called specifically to do mm, yeah that's a good point yeah just do yeah do yeah seek him do the general will in terms of like yeah what he calls us to do in the bible yeah i think that i agree and i think too like even when you do know specific wills specific things you know god's saying to do and you're you're trying to do them and you're trying to like actually obey and all that stuff i'm learning for myself that when you st- just when you stop the actual just seeking and you're because you're focused on all the doing that he's telling you to do or he's told you to do that's when the doing becomes hard and you don't want to do it anymore or you're confused or don't know how to do it or that's when it could be like too much or whatever it is that's what i felt like Mm -hmm. when i've stopped the seeking as much and i'm just focused on god what do i do what more do i do and like i gotta do all this stuff it's like the main main focus is love god and love people like seek god and then and and just don't lose that is my main point like you want to still keep doing that so it seems like i don't know i don't know the answer i'm just we're just talking we're, this, is a, this is a conversation yeah honestly we're just uh. we're trying to figure it out <laughs> okay that's what the point is we're trying to figure out what it means to live simply and right simply living but so, so what you're saying but what i heard you're saying is like when you're focused on the doing you know it's easy to forget about the seeking yeah but you need to still be a doer, right? The, the mm-hmm. Bible says, be doers of the word, not just hearers. Mm-hmm. But it does seem like your driving force should be the seeking, mm. not the doing. Like, don't mm. let the doing motivate the seeking because mm. you're going to burn out that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if yeah. you let the seeking, you know, mm-hmm. fuel the doing, mm. then that cycle, you, you get recharged to the seeking, which enables you mm. to do. And then that's how you can... Yeah, it enables you to yeah, do. Yeah, the burnout's not there because the yeah. seeking is what fuels you yes yeah, the fuel that's true mm. that's true and like when you think about a car like thinking about fuel i don't know if this this is me thinking as i'm <laughs> processing well this is me talking as i'm thinking so take this yeah. with a grain of salt so this may not be true but as, i'm just going to say it and see how it feels mm. see if it makes sense because when you were saying fueling like when you think about a car when it runs out of fuel the car stops it can't move anymore until right. it's fueled up again mm-hmm. so when we're doing without seeking maybe it'd be good to stop doing because mm. that's what god was calling me to do like yeah. just stop like because mm. i was like oh i need to do youtube and i need to do this so many times and i need to do also this and i need to work and i need to do this and i was doing a lot and i was like freaking out and overwhelmed mm. and i feel like i was like just seek me just stop yeah. like you can't move anymore because you're freaking out look at you you're sitting on the couch like you know like so yeah. just stop and go get refueled mm. and continue and then but you don't have to stop if you keep getting if you keep that fuel going if you keep sinking then you can always keep doing because you're always seeking. So no, I'm honestly this just came to me because you you mentioned this earlier, Matthew six thirty three, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of you know of heaven and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So that comes after a passage of Jesus talking about yeah, not worrying. Worry. Mm. So it seems like this is how we are. Like I was talking about, well, I'm worried about all the things that I have to do, or mm. all the things that like. Worry comes from like things that oh, I need to do this and I need to do that. And you were even saying like, there's so many things to do. Like, I just want to live. That's how yeah, I feel too. I just want to live well in the peace. And Jesus is like, why are you worrying? Like, just seek first. Mm. That will fuel the doing. Yeah. Anyway. That's true. Because, yeah, this morning we were talking about, you know, this podcast and me not wanting to quit because that's often what I do. Well, I shouldn't say often what I do. In the past, it seems like I don't keep up with it with the same energy as I did in the beginning or like I quit and just move on to something else or like, um, so I was like, you know, I want to just do all the podcasts or like, what if you don't do it the next weeks? And like, what if it takes a so long to release this and all that stuff? But it's like, yeah, when we're continuing, like, this is a good reminder of like, what you're saying, like, I have to remember that every day I'm going to wake up and pray with God. And if I do that every day and seek him, he's going to continue to work in me to be able to do this and keep going with it. And remind me, because he's kept doing it with this first episode. Remember the podcast. Like, this is what you could talk about. Remember this. Remember that. So it's like, I don't have to worry because that I won't, that I'll quit or give up or that it won't happen because I'm going to continue to seek him. That's the main point. And he's going to work in me to keep going what he wants to keep going. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. I wonder too, if like the whole, I mean, like we're we're so wired to do things, or at least for me, if there's so many things to do on my like to do list, I just take a nap. To be <laughs> honest, because I get overwhelmed and I don't want to do them all. Mm-hmm. 
But I'm so sorry that I add to you to do. <laughs> I do. I've definitely so, add to you. There's to so do. much stuff to do, and I'm I'm thinking about yeah. you know back in the these biblical times. I don't know. It doesn't seem like there was that much going on. Like what mm. what were they they were doing? Like their life was like their life. Like they. <laughs> I mean, they like, they farmed in order to eat, and they exactly that's what I'm saying. Like, but now there's there's so much to do. Like, mm. we have so much to do. Yeah, that's we true. have too many options. There's so many options, of, so many choices. I think I read an article. Actually, I'm not even gonna say that because y'all, I I heard somewhere, okay, in an article some time ago. So don't quote me on this. <laughs> but basically, it was saying that we make like thousands and thousands of decisions a day. Wow. Like, when you wake up, you're like, are you going to turn left or turn right? Are you going to get right out of bed? Are you going to hit snooze? Are you going to, like, every, yeah. like these micro decisions. What are you going to wear? Like, are you going to wear this? Are you going to wear that? Am I going to go to the bathroom first or am I going to go eat first? Mm. Am I going to ignore the fact that I got a, had to pee for the last two hours and just mm-hmm. stay in bed? I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm still uncomfortable and I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, man. Am I going to so- eat breakfast and then brush my teeth or brush my teeth and then eat breakfast? But I want to brush my teeth and then drink this orange juice because it's going to be nasty. <laughs> so like all these decisions like that's like that's you're voicing the, all the decisions I think through in the morning when I and it happens in like these microsecond that was in the first what 10 minutes that you're awake mm. and then you have all these we were forced with so many decisions every single day and it's like when you add options on top of that back then it's like what what's your choice you wake up I'm gonna go fishing for 8 hours mm. and then I'm gonna come back home you know eat this dinner <laughs> fellowship whatever wake up and do the same thing like I don't have an op like but now it's what am I gonna watch don't on don't TV on the you gotta you're gonna decide watch. what you cause you know you sitting there scrolling for an hour and then just go to bed <laughs> don't even put anything on watching the previews on YouTube like okay and then for the next, right. next and then on your phone you know you can scroll through social media mm-hmm. for hours and get and a just, game all these different yeah. apps and yeah there's so many things to do Mm. I feel like that maybe is is for me. I you know I was talking to Cody about. She was like, "What does simply living mean to you?" The first thing I thought about was like just being on a farm. Like <laughs> I wake up, I go feed my pigs. You know, <laughs> take the sheep out, whatever, feed the chickens. I, I mean, obviously I don't know how to farm. I'm just. <laughs> and then like that's what I do. Like we live off the land. Like you grow your crops. Like that is your life. Like the farm is your food. It's your job. Like. You know, there's not that many decisions. Yeah. Not to take away. I'm not saying farming is easy. I'm not trying to make it seem like <laughs> there's not that many decisions in farming because I know that there, yeah. there, there is. But y'all know what I'm mm. trying to say. And it might not be the only way to live simply, but. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's just the picture that came to my mind. Mm, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, when you said that again, like for me, what always comes to mind when I think of like just simply living is I just picture myself on the porch <laughs> unconcerned about any bugs and unconcerned about like mm-hmm. worries of life that typically takes over and just like chilling on the porch and like reading like in peace with the sun on me and like maybe drinking water or some tea or something like that maybe some kids come up when we have kids <laughs> and just laughing I don't know like yeah. truly living in peace that's just what I always picture like like just at peace and it's, that's like that, for me that's what I picture possibly because I'm I could be such a doer where like I'm doing so much that I I'm seeing how I need a rest I need a break um so for me like the peace is like oh I just need a break and rest whereas others might be like going out and doing like evangelizing because they want to do it but they haven't or whatever it is it's like but that's just what comes to mind for me because in my head that equates to not worrying about life Mm. and not like we're having fear and not being concerned about what other people think, but just like living in the peace of God. And that's what I, and when I say not concerned about what other people think, it's more like not putting their expectations, their pressures and their assumptions, my assumptions of what their expectations and pressures are on myself, but just living for God and working for God. And that to me is like, yeah, that is peace because there's no worry and there's no fear. And I could just like, Go take it slow, like take it step by step, not like being so far ahead in life and like being like I should be here and like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think that's huge because we still have to live 
we, like we live in this time and we live in this age and there's not much we can do about it so it's like I'm saying is we have to deal with all the things that are happening but that's why we need peace yeah right it's not like we can travel back in time yeah I guess you could isolate yourself but the Bible says that's a foolish thing to do yep because um, it's got community matters that's why he created you know yeah. two people and not just one so but there is a scripture I'll, I don't know where it is you want me to look it up on my phone yeah that'd be great because I was like oh good I'm not it's like I'm I'm just using a mic so I can use my phone like you know if uh, I can find it I'll be flipping through these pages <laughs> wait what's the verse about maybe we can think of it okay it's, I found it's it. the verse the, the part that stood out it says let the peace of God Yes. R- rule. Yes. In your heart. Yes. I yes. think in your hearts, in your mind. But let I, the peace. I know. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Yes, so I know what you're talking about. There are there is a few yes, things about this scripture. What is it? Colossians three verse fifteen. Read it. Let Let me just make sure that we're. Okay, I mean, it says, "Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful." Wait a second. All right, read that again. Let the peace of Christ... This is Colossians 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Okay, first of all, this is when... Let's break this down. <laughs> so, I it says, let the peace of who? Christ. Okay. So, what I when I was reading this, I'm thinking we're specifying here that there is a particular type of peace mm. that you can only get from Jesus. Mm. Because I know out here in the world today, people are saying, trying all these different ways to find peace. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. there's, there's, you know, like all these different meditations and like yeah, it's true. crystal, whatever, yeah, whatever, yoga, yoga yeah. sage in there. And they're somehow, they're finding some type of peace. But the Bible says, let the peace of Christ, Christ rule. Mm. The only way anything can rule is if it has power. Mm. You can't rule without any power. Mm. Or, or authority. Or authority. Mm. So that means, if the peace of Christ is ruling in your heart, that means something else can't rule in your heart. There can only be one ruler. Ooh, one authority it has to be the ruler. Wow, what in the world? The peace of Christ ruling in your heart means anxiety can't rule in your heart. Mm. Worry can't rule in your heart. Mm. And as soon as it is, then you're not letting the peace of Christ exactly. Rule in your heart. So I think it's like we talk about peace. The next word you said is surrender. We gotta surrender mm. to the peace of Christ to let it have that authority, mm. so that all these other things, all being overwhelmed, you know, I'm I'm preaching to myself. That's in me. <laughs> because I'm I really am talking to myself. Like surrender to that peace so that when all these things come, it's like, wait a second, but there's a ruler, you know, like peace yeah. rules in this heart. Not fear, not anxiety, not stress, mm. not being overwhelmed. It's peace. Yeah. Anyway. No, it's good. No, it's good. And you know how we get the <laughs> It made me think, of course, of Philippians 4, when you think of, like, okay, how do we let peace, the peace of Christ, run in our hearts? And it says, and it's also, now let's not forget the part where it says, be thankful. And I've heard a lot of times where it's like, when you actually gravitate, wait, that's not the right word. When you actually, um, basically making uh, gratitude a discipline in your life, like when you're Mm -hmm. actually thankful intentionally in your life every day. Mm-hmm. Even in the world, like not even like Christians, not even just Christians, they say it, that has an effect on you and your mindset when you're mm-hmm. actually thankful and you make a point to be thankful for things. So like we got this thank you journal that I have stopped using. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the yeah. point was to every that's day true. say what you're thankful for yeah. um, because it does something to you. So like I think that's part of it. But I was going to read because yeah. this is also in Philippians 4 being thankful. So that's why I was that's also why I thought of it. But it says... Oh, sorry. May I be healed of allergies in Jesus' name. Amen. I keep asking, I keep asking, Jesus. Okay. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. Do not be anxious about anything. 
but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God. Okay, I sound like a... Go ahead. <laughs> and, the, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. So mm-hmm. it's supernatural, transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Hmm. So to me, that is, we can main, we can let peace rule when we give our we ask we give our request we ask for what we're wanting like we're asking God like our request right and we're giving to Him you know we're praying to Him we're giving our cares to Him we're lifting off the burdens to Him and we're being thankful for all that he's done with thanksgiving we're thanking god for even listening thanking god for that we can even ask you thanking god for all that you've already done thank god for what you will do Mm -hmm. right and like presenting all of our requests all of our cares all of our worries and concerns lifting all the anxiety and giving it to him that's when peace of god can guard or can you know guard our hearts and our minds and I was also thinking about, and I, I also, like, because I think you've mentioned this before, when, when Jesus says, and we've talked about this, when Jesus said, um, for my yoke, is, my, e- my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm-hmm. So he's giving us an easy yoke and a light burden. Mm-hmm. But I think you said this, it's like, he's giving it to us because we can give him our heavy burden. It's like an exchange. Mm-hmm. It's like when we're giving him all of our burdens, mm-hmm. and we're also giving him all of our pressures and our... Um, the pressures we feel from people and the fears we feel of people and things like that, we're giving all that pressure. Mm-hmm. Then our life is we're taking on what he has, which is we're dying to our flesh, we're dying, we're becoming nothing, mm-hmm. and we're um, giving all of our anxieties to him and taking then his easy yoke because he's in charge, he's the ruler of our life now. Mm-hmm. So we don't, we're not in charge anymore. It's easy for us from here on out because we're the child and we just do what he says. Mm-hmm. And his light burden, because all of our burdens are now on him. We have a light burden now. Our backpack is light. Mm. He took our heavy backpack. So it's both becoming a child and letting him take over our lives and just following him and just, you know, Mm. and then giving him our burdens. And that's how we can have peace and live simply, I guess. Yeah. Come on now. (laughs) I don't know. For me, though, with that is... I need God to help me do those things of giving him my burdens because I can get co- so caught on like it's so much effort to tell him what I'm thinking and to tell him my anxieties and my or anxieties and worries and stresses that I put on myself or that I have in life mm. and like telling him because really all when you tell him then he could take it and when you want to give it to him then he could take it but if you don't tell him then mm. I, I tend to hold on to it but it's so much effort to to give it away and that's what I'm working mm. on. But, okay, last thing, sorry. I feel like I'm always rambling. (laughs) You're just, like, listening. (laughs) But, like, um, God's helping me and reminding me a few days ago of, like, if I just start writing in my journal to pray to him, he will continue to help me unravel. Like, it's the starting, and he will help me unravel. I made, I was trying to make a point, I think it was last year, I was like, I'll write in my journal every day, because I saw how when I just start writing, he helps me pour it out. But I stopped doing that. I started to be like, well, I don't really need a journal. I don't really have anything to say. And I just saw how recently, like, I had so much to say, but I didn't think that I did, but I could feel it by, mm-hmm. like, anxieties that would come up or different things that I was like, well, I seem fine, but it doesn't seem, but at the same time, I'm seeing myself and how I react to things and I'm not fine. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's going on. And possibly it's because I have stopped journaling and stopped releasing things to him. Mm-hmm. So I've just recently tried to start doing that again and make a point to just write my journal every day because he for me specifically he helps me pour things out when i journal mm. yeah that's good yeah i was gonna say something but then i was like no nah, i'm gonna say it. i'm gonna say it because you know she i know she still loves me oh and what let me tell you, I, I know that it's being unraveled because if you've seen her handwriting you can tell <laughs> she's just writing 30 miles an hour and then <laughs> Because he's seen my journal, I've shown it. He's literally looking at it now, and <laughs> it's like, yeah, he, you were writing fast. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> yeah, I like I wrote down because God helped me with this podcast, and He helped me like know the topics for each episode and stuff. So I wrote them down, and I was showing him. I was like, okay, you could read these, know what the topics will be, and he was like, and to and Pete and uh, I can't and read cra- it. I really what, can't. what is in I the really in the what? 
And I was like, it says talk about life. <laughs> it's like, because it's in cursive. I write in cursive in my journal because it's easiest for me to write in cursive because it flows. I don't have to pick up my hand. And I can write really fast. I can write faster. And to me, it looks prettier too. And sometimes my hand gets cramped in the, in the regular handwriting. What's the non-cursive handwriting? Just handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just handwriting. In handwriting, my hand cramps sometimes, and like I feel weird a little bit, maybe because I'm not used to it anymore. Hmm. Versus like cursive, it just flows, and it's like. Ugh. But yeah, sometimes in my cursive writing, I write like signatures where I just I would start off saying Jesus, but just the J is there, and I like scribble the rest because I'm like God knows what I'm talking about. Gee. <laughs> Because my thoughts go so fast. I'm like, I can't keep up with my hand. I'm just trying to hurry mm. up and get to the next thought at this point. <laughs> anyway. And that's okay. I mean, the start, like, yeah, starting. Yes, it's the starting. God, even with this, God's like, just start it, man. Just do it. But mm. yeah, he really, because sometimes I would start my prayers off and be like, God, I don't really know what to say. And I'm just trying to make a practice of writing. And then he would put all these thoughts in. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did this and this and this. Oh, yeah, I need to give you this and da da so I'm like, I don't have enough time to write it all down. I'm like, I guess I'll see you tomorrow or later. I think sometimes, at least for me, this is for me. So this may relate to y'all. I don't know. Sometimes I don't want to start something because I know I won't finish it. Yes, that's but literally it. here's the thing. Especially if it's for God, right? Yeah. I'm putting too much pressure on myself. Yeah, that's true. I don't even want to start it. But then it's like I'm relying on myself to keep it going. Yeah, it's true. It's like, what? Okay. Why would I do that? Yeah, that's a good point. If it, especially if it's something God tells you to start. He's going to give you the grace to do it. Yeah. Just like he gave you the grace to start it. Yeah. And you know what? This reminds me of a, a, a part of a teaching Eric Gilmore was doing on, on the humility of Jesus. Okay. It says, God gives grace to the... Humble. God opposes the proud, mm. but gives grace to the humble. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. <laughs> And so he was saying how, no, you can what resist the flow of God's grace by being proud. God mm. opposes the proud. So it's prideful for me to put on myself the weight of what God wants to do through me. Where is the grace in that? That's not mm. cute. When I'm humble and I'm like, Lord, I can't even, I can't start this without you. I can't finish this without mm. you. I can't do any of the middle without you. Instead of being like, okay, so, okay, you want me to do this? All right, I got it. I'll do this, and then I'll do this, and then halfway through, I'm like, actually, I, don't, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. It's because once God tells us to do something, we put it all on ourselves, mm. and we don't keep, we don't go back to him. That's, yeah. then, then it goes back to the seeking and the doing. It's like, oh, okay, so eager to do forget about the seeking part like forget mm-hmm. about the going back to god like wait can you help me with this like please help me please help me mm-hmm. that's grace flows through that yeah. through humility once you become pride prideful god is opposed to pride mm. so no wonder mm. why we stop things so quickly you keep saying stuff and mm. i'm like oh in that verse what verse is that? Did you find it? Yeah, I did. Um, and I, because I also thought of another one that I wanted to say too. Okay, so for oh shoot, sorry, I lost it. But James four verse six, it's referencing Proverbs three verse thirty four. But he says, but he gives us more grace. That is why Scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Or you could say, God opposes the proud, and but gives grace to the humble. Mm-hmm. That was NLT. Yeah. So. Yes, what you said. And then, but I also thought of, um, and I'm sorry to say, shoot, I'm sorry, Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm working on what is even right, even with like the alternatives, you know, because at the yeah. end of the day, you're, you're kind of saying the same thing. But I was thinking about power is made perfect in weakness. So like when God says um, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Hmm. So my grace is sufficient for you, and it gives grace to the humble. So when you're humble, you're recognizing who you are to God compared to God. Mm. And you're weak and you're nothing compared to God, right? right. Yeah. And so now, with that, now it can give you grace. Like, mm-hmm. it gives you grace, gives grace to the humble. And my grace is sufficient for you because mm-hmm. my power is made perfect in weakness. So we want mm. to stay humble. We want to recognize our weakness in our, in our, 
and our nothingness compared to God mm-hmm. and recognize and, and so that his grace now could take over and his power can be made perfect mm. in our weakness. Mm. <sighs> mm. I was like, this is like a Bible study. I'm going to need I'm this just, every week. <laughs> no, I'm just, I, I was just thinking I was about like, the humility and all of this. Like, on that, that is so tied to humility. All of mm-hmm. what, we, what we said today, mm-hmm. it's like, we got to be humble. Yeah, Jesus, help me. Tell me, remember. Because, like, humility is not just, like, it's ter- it's not tearing yourself down. It's recognizing who you are. And that's, compared to God, it's weak and nothing. Mm-hmm. But also recognizing you're a child of God and an heir of God and, mm-hmm. and w- have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. So it's like, you know, mm-hmm. but it's like also remembering, yeah, it's about God. God's the one doing all the work in you. God's the one doing anything good because God's the one that gives good gifts. Mm-hmm. God's the one that blesses. God's the one in control. Um, but it did remind me that, like, yeah, like, at the end of the day, what's nice about um, so, a task that he tells you to do, like starting a podcast, you yeah. now need to rely on him to do it. So you're now yeah. needing to go to him, which is mm. good. We want to need to go to him. Like, mm. that's why he tells us to do things, potentially, like, so we always need him and mm. go to him. Because when we try to do it on ourselves, like you said, you quit. Or, like, it's too hard. I don't want to anymore. Or, like, you don't even... And that's the thing. Okay, wow, this is how I can just ramble. Go ahead. Because I'm working on this, but I tend to think while I talk because it helps me process it. And, like, it keeps coming. But, like, Mm -hmm. it made me think about, like, especially when it comes to Christian things, like Christian podcasts, Christian YouTubes, Christian books, Christian things because it's about God. I feel like when you're not seeking him and you're not relying on him and going to him, the less you and less you do that, the the more and more you don't see the importance of what you're doing and why it mm. matters, and the less you desire doing it because you're no longer, because you're no longer being filled with Jesus, because you're not seeking Him, because you're not relying on Him, you're relying on yourself. Mm. So you care less about talking about Jesus and the things of God. Yeah. So of course you don't want to do it anymore because you're no longer relying on Him. Mm. But if you always rely on Him, you're always going to desire to want to do it because mm. you're always seeking Him and He's always filling you up. It just made me think about, like, that's what often tends to happen. And when I'm thinking about the trends of me quitting, mm. it's when, I'm stopped, when I've stopped seeking him as much and living life just for him, but when I've lived life for doing and not seeking. Right. Even, and this was when, so I'll talk about my YouTube. I was doing this with YouTube. Like, I, don't, I, I was like, I don't really care. I don't want to do it anymore. Like, it's too much. Like, it's too much work. This is when I'm praying to God every day still, and I'm, like, mm. talking to him and everything. But I'm still so focused on, like, getting things or doing things instead of like remembering the reason I pray to him is to get to know him and to get closer to him Mm. like my mentality was shifting or something I don't know so when I started Mm. doing that then I wanted to do more things for him um and remember like I'm Mm. spending time with you to build our relationship not to like just finish a task or not to like um Mm. I don't know growing I it's not to like get things or not to like I don't know Mm. like just remembering like the intention behind like what you're doing with God and I don't know well, yeah, I mean, I think about our marriage, like, I didn't, we didn't get married so that I could get anything mm. from you. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> surely we didn't marry each other for the money. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but I mean, like, but that's how we treat God sometimes. Mm. Like, you know, well, like you said in your prayer time, I'm always going to him, asking him for something. What can I get from him? We were just talking about this in our marriage group the other day, like the the difference between going to someone, what can you get versus what you can give mm. kind of thing. But it's like, yeah, when when we focus on just our relationship with Jesus, just to like know, like get to know him and, mm. and know him more, know his character, you know, to be more like him, to know his heart, to know his mind, mm. like that's separate from anything that he, he does, you know? Mm. And I feel like when we get into that state, you know, I don't have, well, I'll say I don't have specific scripture to back up what I'm about to say. Because <laughs> I don't want <laughs> like anybody, because I know people, they're quick to come after you. Where does it say that in the Bible? I'm just saying. I <laughs> like, feel, this will encourage you to go look. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Look it up. <laughs> I feel like when we focus on that, you know, the the purity of the relationship of Jesus, you know, as a person and getting to our relationship you know, that's when he will shower us with gifts. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know. I mean, isn't that what we said earlier? What was that, Matthew? Like, 
seek first the kingdom of righteousness and all else then will be added yeah, to you. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so it's like, you know, well, I guess I'm saying it's like you get what you want. Like you wanted to go to him because you wanted this breakthrough or you wanted to see this in your life and you wanted this. But like you get that through just building a relationship with him yes. as a person. Now, I don't know how that, because you know, it says you have not because you ask not. So I still do think there's some you significance still, still to ask. Asking. Yes, 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 yes. Right. Because that's part of opening and sharing your request to God and opening right. up to God. And exactly. Like that. Yeah, that's true. But I guess, I guess the point I think that we're both were saying or what you were saying and what I'm trying to add on to <laughs> is you know the importance of seeking the person of jesus mm. yes that's yes. all i'm gonna say Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yes and remembering that's why we're, we're doing this to like get to know and build a relationship with jesus like um and i want to point out too like before when i was saying like my prayer time like god still used my prayer time because he got me to the point of realizing i need to seek him more and like remembering more so not, not like more so like remembering why i spent time with him it's to get to know him and to get closer to him not to get and stuff because yeah like to your point yeah. like imagine if your friend like you have a friend or uh, that you they only she only hangs out with you because she's trying to get that gift or like trying to get right. you know or like or she's trying to get um instruction from you all the Swimming time like, the i don't know always something good. yeah like something always trying to get something or oh, or because she feels like she has to meet up with you. It's like a ritual thing. Like, okay, I'm here. What, what do you want? Instead of, like, actually laughing together and getting to know each other. Like, mm. you know? Um, it's easy to get caught up in that, especially when you try to create a discipline. But, like, um, and, like, yeah. But, mm. anyway. Yes. So, life, living simply, simply living is what we feel like is simply seeking the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what we determined after this conversation. <laughs> Well, the podcast is over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> there's more. There's more, more to do. More here, but more to unravel, unpack. All right. Thanks um, for listening to yeah. episode one, Simply Living Podcast. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is just us unraveling what simply living means as God reveals it to us. And I hope that he reveals it to you as well. Um, just as you're thinking about it, listening, and t- maybe having conversations yourself. There will be more to unravel, some more to come. And um We'll close this out as I see Joshua's face. <laughs> oh. We'll close this out and um, catch you on the next episode of Simply Living Podcast. See y'all later. See ya.